didn't phase the Stones, however, and they pressed forward with the new album. The musical scene in 1969 was changing, and American groups like The Birds and The Band were bringing country music back to the mainstream. One of the key figures in this country revival was Graham Parsons, who had formed one of the first country rock bands, the International Submarine Band, and was now the leader of a new outfit, the Flying Burrito Brothers. He had met Keith in 1968, and the two had become very close. Whereas Keith was well-versed in blues and rock and roll, Graham had an encyclopedic knowledge of country, and over the following few years, his influence would be heard prominently in the Stones' output. I started to find out his incredible knowledge of music, country music specifically. You know, since we were obviously, we, we, we hooked right away uh, as friends, it, uh, the next thing, being musicians, that we started to find out about what we knew about music, what we liked. There's no barriers here with Keith, and country music was a basic music from America's past, just the same as the blues was, and, you know, Graham Parsons played him some really good examples, and obviously Graham Parsons was... Um, a completely unique, soulful performer, and Keith picked up on that. The two were great mates and taught him a lot. But then Keith taught Graham about rock and roll, so there was like a cultural exchange. I mean, Graham Parsons was horrifying the country diehards with his um, rock and roll. Though the rednecks hated that, and I mean, just the same as probably some Stones fans thought, what, what are they doing with country honk? It's a 